You are now listening to the J Ports Experience. Listen free on iTunes or at theandydareshow.com. Now, here's Jay! Yo! What is the word, people? Welcome to another edition of the J Porks Experience. I'm J Porks, with me as always on the other side of the glass, making sure this is a well oiled podcast machine. Every week is nobody. Got a few things to get to first. But beginning the show, we're going to get to the websites you need to go to to help keep me in business. First of all, I need you to go to ConcertConfessions.com. That's your source for all your live music, news and reviews, for fans, by fans. You head over there, some news stories happening over there are Alice in Chains Spring 2014 tour dates, as well as Ghost, the Swedish doom metalers are coming back to the States with a tour this spring as well. So there's that. There's a lot of other stuff coming at ConcertConfessions.com too. As soon as someone hits a show, we'll bring it to you. And uh, if you want to join our family over at ConcertConfessions.com, just uh, hit me up on Twitter at JPorks. Hit up at ConcertConfess on Twitter. Somebody will help you through that. Me or somebody else will help you through that. Why not join our family? You also have ChristinaRocks.com. She hosts the Time Warp Sunday mornings on 89xradio.com. That's out of uh, Detroit and streaming worldwide. And uh, yesterday, Sunday, I called in. And I got to chat with Christina for a little while. So why not? Uh, the good news is I didn't drop any F-bombs on real radio. The bad news is I think I only said TheMeatPuppets.com once. Drats. But anyway, go to ChristinaRocks.com. I got a hint. I got a... I'm seeing the future here because uh, there's a whole bunch of The Cure is doing stuff. I bet she's going to cover that. Just, you know, because girls like The Cure. It's The Cure. So hit her up. Hang the DJ. She's cool. She plays Old School Alternative on Sunday mornings. 8 to... Uh, I think it's 11. Might be 12. If it's 12, lucky for you. But yeah, now that I'm with no job, I get up every Sunday morning now and listen to Christina. So whenever she needs me to call in, I'm going to call in. We also have theandydeershow.com. Now there's a website I, I screamed out a few times on the radio yesterday. TheAndyDeerShow.com for all your Deer Network podcasting needs. That's the Tyler Kale Show. That's the the Andy Deer Show, which is the flagship show. You also have uh, Smooth Operators with Tyler and Andy. You've got me, of course, and uh, you've got there's some people in the future who will be hosting podcasts, maybe. Can't tell you yet. Don't be surprised if they do. And AnnieQuiet.com, your source for quality. Tons of stuff going on over there. The the Alice in Chains toy dates I posted over here. Because, you know, I was just, that's where I was. Listen to the new Broken Bells. After the Disco, they got a new album. James Mercer and Danger Mouse are back. There's also on AnnieQuiet.com, this happened right after I recorded on Monday, last Monday, that we, there's a 30-minute documentary, Chaos, KRS-One's Temple of Hip Hop. I need you guys to check that out. That's really cool. So KRS-One's Temple of Hip Hop. It's an, it's an exclusive 30-minute documentary, nearly five years in the making. KRS-One breaks down what hip-hop culture really is, what it isn't, and how it all came about. His stories are illustrated by Ed Pisker, creator of the hip-hop family tree graphic novels. 
So check that out. There's a review of the Dum Dum Girls new album. Dum Dum Girls succumb to stale cliches on Too True. The Afghan Wigs are set to return with their first new album in 16 years. Motley Crue will never ever tour again. I'm going to get to that in a second. Because I've got funny things to say about that. Could stream that new uh, that new Les Claypool album, Duo Le Twang's Four Foot Shack. There is a Man in the Box cover on that. Not really that good. Against Me was on Letterman. Check that out on Annie Quiet. You could watch the full rehearsal from Queens of the Stone Age and Dave Grohl at um, at the Grammys last week before they got cut off by. Uh, by a Delta Airlines commercial. New U2 song. Bunch of other stuff going on at AntiQuiet.com. That's your source for quality. <laughs> so, what the fuck goes on, people? Are you doing as good as me right now? Well, none of you is doing as good as me. None of you got your unemployment like I did. So none of you are making money from doing nothing at home besides me. So that's fun. That gives me reason to wake up early in the morning and record my podcast. But uh, late last night, not late last night, all last night, the big game, the Super Bowl, the snowy, the snowy conditions, not at all. It was like 50 degrees at kickoff for the Broncos Seahawks last night. And, uh... You know what? Somebody tell the Broncos. Somebody tell the Denver Broncos that there's a game going on at MetLife Stadium that they still haven't shown up to. Because, damn, that was bad. Seahawks won in a rout. See, like, nothing I've ever... I mean, I thought... I thought Peyton Manning would give him a run for that money, at least. I thought they'd at least make it close. Like, I, my team never makes it to the Super Bowl. But at least, you know, you, sometimes you get to watch a, a, an interesting game from time to time. Well, that wasn't last night. Speaking of last night, let's move to the halftime show. Bruno Mars. With the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And here's the thing about Bruno Mars. I don't like his music. I don't like that crap. Me, I, singular. Now, all that that said, I understand that the Super Bowl halftime performer needs to be somebody who, you know, it can't be somebody I like. It's got to be somebody like the whole world likes, like Bruno Mars, which is good. Mass appeal. The drumming. So for a second he was doing this drum solo. Twitter was like, oh man, I didn't know we could drum, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It is pretty cool. It's pretty rad that people who sing good can play instruments. I think that's cool. But when they come back from the halftime show and uh, the analyst... I forget the guy's name. It wasn't Jimmy Johnson. It wasn't Mark, Mike Strahan. It wasn't... Bradshaw wasn't there. It wasn't Howie Long. It was like the host guy. Mayfield or something. I can't think of his... Anyway. When he says Shades of Ginger Baker with Bruno Mars, we're getting a little crazy here. That guy wasn't even one-tenth of Dave Grohl drumming. He's good. It's good. It was a good performance by him. If you like that, if you like that, he did everything he normally does, and people liked it. People thought it was amazing. He brought out the Red Hot Chili Peppers to sing Give It Away because it's not 2014. Why didn't they do their new song? The Red Hot Chili Peppers should have did their new song... What's it called? Abracadabra Fornia? Okay. 
So the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, and I did see a picture of Flea's bass not plugged in. So there's that. That's on the internet. Find it. I'll find it. And I'll give it to you in the notes. So yeah, listen. If Bruno Mars wants to sing crappy music, I'm no one to stop him. But when we call him, when we compare him to Ginger Baker, that's when I have a problem with it. And speaking of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, they're like the biggest news this week. There is a song out right now called Abra Cadabra Fornia. Fornia. It's if you go to rhcp2014.com, you'll be prompted with Super Bowl ads and a link to click and listen to the new Red Hot Chili Peppers song. But it's not a real Red Hot Chili Peppers song. It's a parody song by the guy, this guy, I can't pronounce his name. He's the front man of a band called Hot Karate. Okay. Now, I'll, re I'll read uh, the little, I'll read the postscript here. Heading to the website RHCP2014, one is presented with an ad polluted page promoting Red Hot Chili Peppers' performance at this year's Super Bowl. And a song called Abracadabra Fornia starts autoplaying. It's absolutely ridiculous. It takes all of Red Hot Chili Peppers' horrible cliches and mashes them into one single magna magnum opus of cheesiness, begging the question of wh just why anyone likes this band in the first place. We won't spoil any surprises by posting any lyrics. So just go listen to the song. <laughs> it's hilarious. It does a little bebop scat. The whole, the whole thing, the whole thing that the Red Hot Chili Peppers do is what this song does. Except they would have done better. One thing this this hot karate guy could have did was added a storyline about a girl and heroin. Because this, every Red Hot Chili Peppers song is the same. Met a girl, name a random spot in California, gets into drugs, loses the girl. Same random spot in California. Does drugs. Dies. That's every... Every... Every Red Hot Chili Peppers song is that. Which is fine. Which is cool. Hey, they do what they do well. They've been doing it for a while. They've got tons of fans. I'd see them live if they promised not to do that shit they did at the Super Bowl last night. Flea. You're 52 years old, are you not? Put a damn shirt on. Dude, I look good and I got my shirt on. Put your shirt on, dude. Unless you're writing things on your chest. There's that. There's the fake Red Hot Chili Peppers song. It's epic. So, the Rolling Stone headline says, Bruno Mars brought drum solos, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and a solid dose of nostalgia to the Super Bowl halftime show. Do we need nostalgia for the Super Bowl halftime show? Like, is every kid in the 90s tuning into the Super Bowl to watch the Red Hot Chili I mean, do fans have given away now when that came out in 1990 or whatever year? Were those people saying, man, I hope when I'm 40 years old, They'll play this at the Super Bowl. I mean, damn. It's just so weird. I mean, listen. That said... I, listen. I didn't like... Mastodon have a new album and they're touring this year. That's breaking. <laughs> just heads up. Um... Yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm surprised they didn't come out with the socks on their penises. Somebody said that last night. Somebody said, my, my timeline, the Twitter feed thing, is full of sock jokes. We get it, guys. We don't really get it, because we were all young when that happened. So there's that. <laughs> Flea Pluggy Basin.
I said earlier that Motley Crue was going on their last tour ever. Motley Crue is calling the final tour. They're saying all bad things must come to an end. Also, the Allman Brothers announced that they were having their last tour as well. So here's what I say. Now, you, let's give the fans what they want, okay? Stop denying people the things that they want. I want to see Motley Crue and the Allman Brothers split a bill at Madison Square Garden. That's it. I want them to cover each other's songs and go on stage and jam like Bruno Mars and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I want that. I want that more than I want anything in life. And you want that. Who doesn't want that? They can do like Weezer and the Flaming Lips did a few years ago at PNC Bank Art Center. You have, you have one band play three songs. You have the other band play three songs. Here's the thing about Motley Crue is that I'm from New York, so I don't get their coolness. Like, I, I mean, people have these stories about Motley Crue, and they'll tell you stories about how they were, you know, how they did this, this, and this. And all those things that sound cool to people who live in California or on the West Coast and people who know that stuff sound just douchey to people like me on the East Coast who have no idea about them. I get it. I get it. They're big douches. I get it. Tommy Lee drums with his cock. I get it. So, I may be hot for teacher, but I am not hot for anything on that tour unless unless it's the Allman Brothers and Motley Crue teaming up for a double bill at Madison Square Garden. Do Barclays Center it too. Bring out Jay-Z. Just like Bruno Mars brings out Red Hot Chili Peppers. I thought they were going to do Dazed and Confused. Did they do Dazed and Confused and I just wasn't paying attention? Maybe. It doesn't really matter to me. I was already done with that game. What a waste of my time. Seriously. The Super Bowl, the two best teams, and it's a blowout. Denver scores eight points. Legal weed bowl. Heard mass transit was pretty bad on the way out. But lucky for America, lucky for the NFL, they got their game in on perfect weather, and they got out of there. And now, you wake up Monday morning, and what's going on in New York City? Well, we're back to the Arctic freeze. Six to eight inches pouring right now. Here's the thing. This idea that the snow is going to stop me from acquiring drugs is absolute lunacy. As if that's going to happen. I love this. I, I, you know, people get. I look out the window. It's like, oh, womp womp. It's snowing. Things aren't gonna happen today. No, they are. Like, I need a pack of cigarettes. I'm walking to that store. It's just a little snow. Does this storm have a name? I, I know I moved to New York. I mean, moved to New York. I live in New York. If I don't like it, I can move. And I don't mind it. But, I mean, do we need it? This is like the, the 20th time it's snowing already. I mean, I, it's not like I'm Andy and I live in Illinois, you know? <laughs> I didn't know I live in a, a fucking, on the snow belt here. <laughs> so there's that. There's the Allman Brothers Motley Crew that I covered. There's one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. One more thing. Pretty sure. Did you, anyone catch against me on uh, Letterman? That was cool. That was rad. I mean, really, there's a... Everything stopped last night because of the Super Bowl. So there's that. There's the first half. 
bunch of stories happen. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this time to take a short break. Short break, I'm going to read you the commercials. And then we're going to come back. And we're going to do a bunch of other stuff. So we'll be back after this. Hey, Jay Porks here recording my own commercials. If you want to find your website in this little spot in between my podcasts, you just hit me up on Twitter at Jay Porks or you email me jporks at gmail.com and you hit up the Andy Deer Show. Hit up Andy Deer. Hit up Tyler Kale. Hit up everybody. It's the Deer Network coming to you live in 2014. And we're back. Don't mind me. I, I used the break to post Mastodon tour dates on AntiQuiet. So if you go to AntiQuiet.com right now, you can see where Mastodon is going to be playing this spring. The thing about being on the East Coast and working for a website that has a lot of people over on the West Coast is that when you wake up early in the morning, you get to win the internet, which is what I did. So if you... um. Mastodon, beginning April April 29th, they're going to be in Portland at the Roseland Theater. Then they're going to Oakland, the Fox Theater on May 1st, May 2nd, the Nokia Theater in Los Angeles. I heard, uh, I texted somebody, they don't want to go to the Nokia Theater, they think it's a dump. They're playing the House of Blues in Vegas on the 3rd of May, First Avenue in Minneapolis, Minnesota on May 7th, the Riviera, the Riviera Theater, or this is the Rivera Theater, in Chicago, Pittsburgh, they're doing Stage AE on May 9th, they'll be at the Town Borum in Buffalo May 12th, the 930 Club in Washington, D.C. on May 13th, May 15th, they will be at New York City's Terminal 5, what I'm calling one of the decent mid-sized venues we have left here in the city, it's one of the venues I don't hate, that's not a stadium. They're playing the Palladium in Boston on the 16th of May, Electric Factory in Philadelphia on the 17th of May, and they will end things as a late addition to the Rock on the Range Festival lineup in Columbus, Ohio on May 18th. Rock on the Range features the band currently touring under the moniker of Guns N' Roses along with Motorhead and Slayer. So, there's that. So go check out Mastodon if you're interested. They're working on a new album, too. Produced by... Am I going to be able to pronounce this guy's name? No. Nick Rascuna... Damn. Ras... Alright, anyway, the guy's name is Nick. I got it in the article. And If you follow me on Twitter, you can click the article and read it. I can't pronounce people's names. I don't want to sound stupider than I am. But this guy's worked with the Hold Steady, Foo Fighters, and Ghosts in the past. So, fun times coming out of Mastodon. The Georgia Sludge Bashers are back. I actually saw them... I've seen Mastodon twice. Mastodon's the band that follows me everywhere I'm going. I saw Mastodon on the Black Diamond Sky tour with Alice in Chains Deftones I think this is 2010, maybe 2011, but I want to say 2010. And then, when I went to Washington State to see Soundgarden, Queens of the Stone Age, and the Meat Puppets, the fourth band on that card was Mastodon. Show up in Washington. Mastodon's there. Chris Kirkwood was talking about uh, the bassist. He's like, the guy's, the guy's epic. He's just, and he was doing all the gyration. So, fun times with Mastodon. I've seen Mastodon twice. I'm not exactly a death metal guy. But why not? You know, if they send me one more Bruno Mars email for a pre-sale, I'm going to be very upset. You'd think these websites, these websites like Ticketmaster and TicketWeb and Ticket Liquidator, that they could see my purchase history. So what makes them think that I'm going to buy 
tickets to see Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars doing his Ginger Baker impression. Enough with that. So, what a... Oh, yes. I do have uh, some errors and omissions. Not errors and omissions, but uh, miscalculations, I should say. Last week, I was talking about the Super Bowl, how it's far away. How it's not in New York. It's not in New York. It's in the Meadowlands. It's in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And I also said this on Christina's show yesterday. I said it's two hours away. Now, the last time I was at the Meadowlands, that I went there for a game, I must have been like nine years old, ten years old. That's not true. A couple of years ago, we went with uh, the College of Staten Island, had $25 tickets, Jets, Dolphins. It was the game Ted Ginn brought back two kicks. Like, within five minutes of each other. But before that, as a child, I used to go to the stadium. Towards the end of the year, when the Jets were out of it, I used to go to the games. Because my dad and my uncle had season tickets. And I said it took two hours to get there. It did, because I lived in Brooklyn, Canarsie. And it was about two hours from there. But I'm being told that from my house... On Staten Island right now, it's only about 45 minutes. So, I'm coming clean. I miscalculated. Now, that doesn't mean that it took 45 minutes. That just means that if there's no traffic, that's how long it takes. <laughs> but I was basing it on my past trips there as a child, the two hours. So, there's that. What an unentertaining game that was. I'm really disappointed in it. And my pick, if you didn't hear my picks last week, I came pretty close to getting it right. I guessed Denver 34 and Seattle 24. Now, I, I kind of got it right in a sense where I was totally wrong. But it's okay. That's why I'm not in the, That's why I'm not a bookie. That's why I host a weekly podcast. Write about music and stuff. Try to write about music. Try to wake up early enough to write about music. Prince was on that New Girl show last night. I don't really care about New Girl. I don't really care about Prince. But he he's so fucking weird. Why He's suing his fans and then he's showing up on New Girl. I don't get his story. I guess mystery. Everyone dies to be mysterious. If you if you're like friends with me on Facebook, you know that I am the most least mysterious person in the world. I share everything. I don't care. Had a, I had my I had somebody told me that my uncle read my blog and he thought it was funny. In 2014, the answer to he read my blog is which one? There's jporks.com, there's jporksmusic.blogspot.com, there's, you know, I write for several things. I, I write all, the only thing I don't actually do is real work, like, in the real world having a job. But at home I do plenty of stuff. Plenty of stuff. Also, now that I've secured, secured some unemployment money, now is the time for you people to get in touch with me and let me know what shows we are hitting up. Where are we going? Because there's nothing going on that I see. No no bands have booked shows where I say I need to get to that. I need to. There's nothing. Nothing is going on there. The last two shows I wanted to go see was December 14th and 15th at the Barclays Center when MGMT played with Dinosaur Jr. on a Friday night that I couldn't go to because I had a job at the time. And the the next night, Queens of the Stone Age played, and I was at a wedding. Those were the last two shows I, I wanted to see. It's not like I'm not seeing shows because I don't want to. I want to, just nothing's happening. I'm going to have to go across the country to see the Meat Puppets later this month. Month, later this year. 
And the good news is, on Christine's show yesterday, I did not drop any F-bombs on live radio, which is good. You know what I might do? Since she, she sent me, the, she emailed me the number, I might just call her and not tell her that I'm calling. I just call up every week and scream, theandydeershow.com, until she hangs up on me. I might do that. She'd think that's funny. So there's that. And listen, if you need, if you own a business, or if you know people who own a business, or if you know people who want to do some sort of advertisement for things that they're selling, I've got time. I can do that. So hit me up on Twitter, at JPorks. Let me know if you need, if you need me to advertise things, I'll do it. I don't care. Honestly, I'm, I'm looking to fill this. Like, I got one commercial in the middle of this, and it's me. And I'd like it to be more people. Also, I'm going to have Shannon Sam on in a few weeks. I say that very confidently. I did not tell him that yet, but I, I'm going to call him up. And, you know, I'm sure he won't mind. He won't mind coming on. So let me know what you want me to ask him. Again, hit me up at J. You can get me on Instagram, of course, at jporks. Jporks everything. Go to concertconfessions.com and join our family. Yay! Wynn Butler and Pearl Jam did Rockin' in the Free World. I gotta tell you, I'm not gonna take a break from the podcast to cover that. I'm not. thing is I like to make fun of things and I'm not like in the in the anti quiet art like usually like I said when I said Guns N' Roses I said the band currently touring under the moniker of Guns N' Roses I wanted to type that but I didn't want to get in trouble so I just wrote Guns N' Roses that's the problem with having bosses you can't you can't just say what you want when you want so I'm trying I'm working on it I'm, I'm working on some things. So the Super Bowl is out of my town, and it will never be back. Never, ever, ever. The 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 fear, the fear of snow, has scared away the Super Bowl forever. Although I will say this: last week I was saying how if the weather was bad and the stadium was empty, that would be a problem. Stadium was really loud. I It was really loud. It wasn't, you know, usually the Super Bowl is the, as Joe Buck said, the um, the corporate crowd for the Super Bowl. You get the, the businessmen. And uh, they usually, usually don't make a lot of noise, but they the noise was being made. Eli was in the building. The way Peyton was playing, I thought Peyton was in the luxury box and Eli was playing. So there's that. There's that. All right. Since no news is breaking as I'm... Since no news is breaking as I'm doing this podcast, I'm going to wrap things up here because... Because why not? Because I'm going to spend this week... Going, going to, uh, I'm going to take a day this week going to Rough Trade Records in Williamsburg. If it's open, I know they're not doing shows there right now still. They had to put the shows on hold, but I think it's still open, so I'm going to make my way there. And, you know, any other record store suggestions you have, just tweet them at me, at jparks. I'll go there with my camera, and I'll be really annoying. Because if there's one thing I'm good at, it's being annoying. And you could ask any girl I've dated. And that and they'll tell you that that's a fact. All right, so let's go over. Let's go over my friends one more time before I get up out of here. ChristinaRocks.com, Hang the DJ. She hosts the Time Warp, 89xRadio.com, every Sunday morning. Old school alternative, sometimes featuring about three or four minutes from this guy. Because I got the number, and I'll call up. She's in D. She's at the shelter. Eight mile. All that. 
We have ContentConfessions.com for all your live music, news and reviews, for fans, by fans. Maybe I'll put the Mastodon tour dates up there on, under a pseudonym. You also have AnnieQuiet.com, your source for quality. The latest story happening at Annie Quiet is posted by some guy named Jay Porks. And it's Mastodon planning a new album, and they're touring. Posted that during the commercial break. And also, of course, of course, theandydeershow.com. That's for me, the Jay Porks experience, the epicness of New York City. That's for Tyler Kale, the Tyler Kale Show. In California, I.e. That smooth operator is with Tyler and Andy. And it's the flagship show, The Andy Deer Show. And what I need you to do is when you're at those websites, if you're at theandydeershow.com or you're at concertconfessions.com, you got to click the Amazon ads. Because when you click those Amazon ads and you buy stuff, you will be helping us out. And why wouldn't you not want to do that? Who doesn't want to help out a friend? Aren't we all friends? Aren't we biffles? I thought we were biffles. You're going to buy stuff anyway. Might as well. Antiquiet.com, your source for quality. Consequences.com, the Indie Deer Show.com. Did I hit it all? I hit it all. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> till next week. What do I always say? Whiskey, weed, Warren, Zevon. Late. This has been the Jay Parks Experience. Thank you so much for listening. 